This is the first and most important circuit every Rust player should build when setting up an electrical system that uses a battery. Newer players tend to connect their power source, in this case a solar panel, directly to their battery and the battery directly to whatever else they need to send power to. While this will work, the battery gets utilized while it's being charged and, depending on solar conditions, this may result in a less than fully charged battery that won't last you through the night when the sun sets. This concept also applies when you're using other variable power sources such as wind turbines. While you can set up enough turbines or solar panels to create a large buffer of power generation to prevent a lot of issues, why spend the resources for extra power that may be wasted when you can just set up a smart circuit instead? The infinite power circuit allows you to power all your components using all of the available solar or wind energy first, and only switches to battery power if there is not enough from your primary generation sources to keep your base running. Conversely, if there is extra power being generated from solar or wind, it is used to charge the battery. This is why this should be the first circuit you build once you are able, since it sits between all of your power sources and the rest of your base's electrical systems. To build the circuit, you obviously need some sort of power source and a battery. You will also need two branches, a blocker, and an ore switch. While you can buy a solar panel, wind turbine, and medium battery between Bandit Camp and Outpost, you can't buy any of the other electrical components you will need. Unless you have the BPs to craft them, you will either need to find them in the wild or buy them from another player's vending machine if available. For this video, I'm going to use a single solar panel and a small battery to show you how the circuit works. I'll upload more detailed explanations of how to scale the system up for larger batteries, as well as multiple power sources and storage configurations. I will also explain how to calculate the right amount of power you will need to produce to most efficiently power your system while providing enough extra juice to recharge the battery completely in one cycle. I'll include links in the description to those videos once they are uploaded. The build is fairly straightforward, so I'll show you those steps first and then explain how it works. Place your two branches, a blocker, and an ore switch. The ore switch is the last stop in the circuit and will output your main power line to the rest of your system. Now for the wiring. Connect your solar panel to the power in of the first branch. Set the branch amount to 9, which you'll notice is one less than the 10 power a small battery outputs. I'll explain how we get this number later. Connect the branch we just set to one of the inputs on the OR switch. This branch is what powers our circuit with our solar panel when there is enough sun. Run the remaining power out to the next branch, which is where we'll handle the charging and discharging of the battery. Keep the branch value at the default, which is 2, and run this branch to the block pass-through. Run the remaining power out to the battery input, then run the battery output to the power in on the blocker, and then take the power out from the blocker and connect it to the second input in the OR switch. This line provides the power from the battery when it is active and discharging. Again, the power out from your OR switch is the main power line that feeds the rest of your system, or whatever it is you want to provide power to. Now let me explain how the circuit works in a little more detail. Here is the completed circuit with the solar panel producing its max output of 20 watts. The components with power are in green or yellow, the solar panel is running everything, and the extra power is being used to charge the battery as shown with the blue highlight. The blocker is not highlighted, which means it is doing its job and preventing power from the battery from running through it while there is sufficient solar power available. The net output is 8 power from the OR switch when on solar power. Now if there is insufficient power from the solar panel, or if it is destroyed, the battery kicks in and you'll still output a constant 8 power from the OR switch regardless as you can see here. When the solar power is restored, the battery stops discharging and starts to recharge while the solar panel powers the system at a constant 8 power again. The reason this all works is due to how our branch redistributes power. When you set the amount of power to branch, that amount is always sent via the branch output first, with anything remaining beyond that sent via the power out. What that means is if you have less power available coming into the branch than what is needed for both the branch and the power out, then the power out will get less power first until it is to zero before the branch loses any power. The opposite is true. As power comes back on, the initial watts are redirected to the branch first until that amount is met before distributing the leftovers via the power out. So back to our circuit. We have 20 power from the solar panel going into the first branch. The reason we branch out 9 here, or 1 less than the max battery output, is because every electrical component uses one power. So when the battery is active, it outputs 10 power, of which 2 is used between the blocker and the OR switch, netting 8 power. To get the same level of power from the solar panel, we set this first branch to 9 since we only lose 1 power from the OR switch after this branch, which gets you to the same net 8 power. This assumes you want to have the same power available regardless of time of day. 
If for some reason you want to maximize the power from the solar panel and then use less power when on battery, you can increase the branch amount to more than nine, but you need to mess around with it to make sure you're still sending some power to activate the blocker and charge the battery for long enough to last through the night. If you don't send enough power to the battery, it will discharge prematurely and you will eventually run out of power. That's where properly sizing your power generation, be it solar or wind, becomes critical and is a topic for another video. So we siphon off 9 watts in our first branch from our 20 watt solar power and send that to our OR switch. We lose 1 to this branch and that leaves us with 10 power to send to the second branch for the battery. This second branch takes 2 power to activate the blocker, consumes 1 watt in the branch itself, and then sends the remaining 7 watts to charge the battery. While the battery is able to output 10 watts, it is currently being blocked as you can see here with the blocker outputting nothing while the solar panel is active. As soon as the amount of power from solar is insufficient, the blocker loses power and releases the flow of electricity from the battery. Let's see how this works in practice, keeping in mind the mechanism we have demonstrated for how branches distribute power. As the solar power drops, we first lose power going to charge the battery from the power output of the second branch. Once that power is exhausted, we start to lose power going to the blocker itself from the branch outside. As we reach 12 output from the solar panel, you can see there is only one power left going to the blocker, which means once solar availability is below 12, the battery will start to discharge, despite there being some solar power available. Again, how much extra power generation you have available will directly dictate when this cutoff happens during the day and whether you'll have enough power to last through the night. At this point, the clock is ticking on your battery, and as long as your solar panel is providing less than 12 power, it will not be used for anything. As the sun rises again, once we get to 12 power or more from the panel, it takes over providing the power to our system and then starts to charge the battery again once there is sufficient power beyond the needs of the system. The power output from the OR switch is always at 8 regardless of power source. And that's it. The most important and first circuit you should build in your electrical system once you have the right components. Let me know if you have any questions or want me to explain anything else in more detail in a future video by commenting below. And stay tuned for future videos where I show you how to apply this circuit to any configuration you may need.